Well, joining us right now to uh, talk about uh, the life and legend of Chris Kyle, American Sniper Navy SEAL, which is the name of a new ebook, is its author, Michael Mooney. Hey, Michael, how are you, sir? Hi, Steve. How are you? Okay, thanks for joining us. You know, you had such a close uh, relationship with uh, Chris. I mean, you were following him around, um, uh, writing about him, covering him, learning about him, interviewing him for, for nine months leading up to his uh, his untimely, tragic, uh, really horrific death. So, um, you know, you, you, you came to know him in a way that, uh, that not too many people uh, other than, than his wife and some others uh, came to know him. Yeah, we were working on a, a kind of in-depth, long magazine profile. And so I had the opportunity, to, you know, at the time it was an honor to sit and talk with him for an extended period of time, uh, to go over a lot of aspects of his life, um, and to just kind of get to know him in a way that, uh, at the time, a lot of media, uh, a lot of reporters didn't. How did you find out about uh, the fact that he had been shot by uh, by a, a, a soldier, former soldier, who had uh, a post-traumatic stress uh, disorder that he was had been working with, trying to uh, trying to mentor? Uh, I had just emailed him. Uh, we had just been emailing back and forth not too long before it happened. Uh, I was driving uh, home from dinner, and somebody sent me a text message. Uh, I pulled over. I thought it was a joke. Um, uh, I thought it was, you know, some sort of strange hoax that, you know, these kind of things go around uh, Twitter, around the Internet. And within a couple of minutes, more text messages started coming in, and I realized it was real, and it was just unbelievable. Okay, so, so you know, we all have this... Uh, this um view of him you know we, we we think of him we see his pictures we've heard him speak and we we think of him as this rugged you know navy <laughs> seal sniper um the american sniper he he distinguished himself as uh, to, to earn that title and uh through the book the whole thing and t tell us a different side of him i mean we, we you know obviously his wife um we just heard from her and she got emotional and she probably could uh, tell us a completely different side but what did you learn about the man how will you remember him well, he really was he, so many different people all at once. He was that incredible warrior, uh, the American hero that people just, you know, were drawn to. Uh, he was a great family guy, that kind of guy. But he was also just a gregarious character, um, you know, a really uh, nice grin, that kind of warm, uh, charming guy, uh, jokester, uh, really liked, you know, was very uncomfortable being called a hero, very uncomfortable... Uh, with the publicity, didn't want to write the book, uh, was basically told that it was going to happen with or without his cooperation, and he wanted to make sure that credit went to the right places. But he was just, he, and he really prided himself on being a regular guy, just a, a guy who took his job very seriously and, and really enjoyed it. But he really liked being just a Texas guy, just uh, the kind of guy who would sit around and drink a couple beers and hang out and and toss jokes back and forth. Michael, I'm going to ask the control room to call you right back if you could hang right up because we got this b terrible buzz on the line when, when you speak uh, to me or when there's silence on the line. So just uh, hang up the phone real quick. We'll call you right back uh, within 10 seconds if that's okay. Will do. All right, thanks. Yeah, it's, whew, just annoying the heck out of me. Uh. <laughs> so, um, hey, modern technology is a wonderful thing except when it's uh, less than perfect. So we'll, uh, we'll try calling back right now and... Uh, and uh, We'll get him on the line, and we will uh, we will continue the conversation. And of course, uh, uh, Chris uh, Kyle um, was killed, and uh, he was killed by a man that he was helping, a, a returning soldier who he was helping uh, try to overcome or deal with at least um, post traumatic stress disorder, as I just alluded to. And uh, in this ebook, the the life and legend of Chris Kyle. By the way, the ebook is is two ninety nine. So if you want to go online and, and, and find it, it's uh, by Little Brown, and it's, uh, it's, it's out there. It's been out there for about uh, a couple of weeks. Um, it, it, it's really worth the read. And, uh, you know, a true American hero who did not crave the spotlight, certainly earned the spotlight, but shied away from it. Um, but the spotlight was drawn to him because he was, so, you know, such, such a magnetic personality. And um, it's, it's just a, the, the ultimate tragedy in the way he... Uh, 
he met his uh, his end. All right, we're rejoined by Michael Mooney, the author of The Life and Legend of Chris Kyle, American Sniper, Navy SEAL. Uh, Michael, that's I think that's much, much better. Okay, so 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 tell us some stories. I mean, I know that, uh, you know, this uh, this this gives us a, a full sense of of, uh, of his life and and his death. And, and uh, you know, t- tell us what uh, what sticks out in your mind that that probably I don't know about him and most people listening don't know about him. Well, like I said, there are a lot of different aspects of his life. Uh, as a father, you know, he was a proud Texan uh, in all aspects of life. As a father, uh, he was this kind of caring, uh, gentle bear type figure. But when his children were born, uh, he was in California, right? He was in the SEALs, uh, but wanted to make sure that the first ground his children touched uh, was going to be Texas soil. So for the birth of both of his children, he had his family send boxes of Texas dirt which to outside uh, to people outside of Texas probably sounds more strange than it does inside Texas. Uh, that's, you know, it's endearing and it's just kind of, it shows here, you know, the, the soil, the, I've never heard of any, I mean, I'm from New York and I understand my, for instance, my son was born in Brooklyn and then we moved out when he was a month, but he tells everybody I was born in Brooklyn. We live in Jersey now. So I can understand the pride, but wow, I never, I never heard of anything like that. That's amazing. That's right. He wanted to make sure that his, the first ground that both of his children touched was Texas soil, no matter where he was in the world. That is incredible. Uh, that is incredible. So stories like that, you know, he was, he was a guy that was so multifaceted. Um, he was really, really intelligent. He could sit there at briefings and meetings and look like he wasn't paying attention and then minutes later be able to recount the entire thing verbatim. Uh, at business meetings, people talk about him sitting there with an iPad playing some sort of video game, popping bubbles, that kind of thing, seemed like a, a goofy kid. And then they would ask him a question. He would put down the iPad, answer perfectly. He'd been paying perfect attention, didn't even need to the make whole eye time. contact. Yeah, yeah. And then go right back to the, the bubble pop. <laughs> All right. Tell me about, though, I, I, I heard something about uh, a story that, that you were, were reporting on uh, that uh, it's possible that, uh, that um, Chris Kyle had actually killed two men in self-defense in Texas, and, and that was all swept under the rug. I mean, what, what, what is that all about? Well, there's this now famous gas station story. Uh, it started, I heard the story before I'd heard of Chris Kyle. Uh, I'd heard that there was this special operations soldier uh, who had just come back uh, who was attacked at a gas station, had two uh, carjackers come up to him with guns. Uh, he, you know, put his hands in the air, turned around, looked like he was going to reach into the, the, the truck, uh, and pulled a gun, shot both of these guys dead in this incredible uh, action scene, action movie scene. Uh, then the police came, reviewed the tape, and found that this incredible scene that happened. You know, there was uh, some sort of Defense Department involvement. Uh, I had heard the story two years before Chris Kyle's book came out about, uh, or I guess I know people had heard this almost two years. And this would have taken place. This would have taken place when, um, um, this would have been in 2010 sometime, uh, in sometime early 2010, uh, somewhere south of Dallas. Okay. Details. There are a lot of versions of this story going around. Uh, as a reporter, when I first heard this, it was incredible. I wanted to, you know, obviously find out. Absolutely. Sure. Everything I could about this. When his book came out, uh, it occurred to some people at the D Magazine office, this, I wonder if this was the story that we'd heard, right? I wonder if this may have been the person. It was one of the, he's one of the few people in the entire world who might be capable of that physically uh, with, the tra- with the training he's had. He's one of the few people who, if it were possible, would have the kind of context that, you know, that you would need for that kind of thing. Right. So uh, I wanted to do a story about him anyway, all the aspects of him that weren't covered in the book, and kind of a look at him after his book came out and his transition. And he had so successfully transitioned back to the civilian world. He was president of a company. Uh, he was in public all the time. He had a really good demeanor. He was helping people. And so I wanted to do a story that looked at that. But I also had to ask him this. I had to ask him whether it's true. So during one of the long interviews we had early on, uh, Towards the end, I said, look, I've heard this story. Uh, I wonder if it was about you. It involved this gas station. He didn't want to get into the details too much at the time. Uh, you know, he was on a book tour, and he didn't mention this in his book, but he did confirm. You know, he did confirm that, yes, that he was the guy. That really? Did wow. Happen. 
Yeah. And you say so the defense. The, 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 I'm sorry. And you say the defense department helped uh, squash it because otherwise, that's that's not only huge news. Like you said, that's like a, right out of a movie. And and that would be. I mean, that would that would make him a legend uh, above and beyond everything else that had taken place in his life. Uh, but there, I guess the defense department had had reasons because it's not easy to get that swept under the rug. Certainly. Well then, yeah. Well, I after his death, I, I and actually before his death, I started calling police stations because I wanted to figure out exactly where it was. And I and if there was this video, of course, as a reporter, I wanted to see the video. Uh, and of all the police stations I called, all the police chiefs, uh, I went straight down the highway that I had heard that it happened on. They knew nothing about it, right? There. They knew nothing. They knew nothing exactly. <laughs> no police reports, no coroner reports, nothing out there. So it's it's kind of this legendary story. Uh, he confirmed that it happened, and you know it's well. It's good for you to get him to do that. That 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 that's uh, that that's amazing. That really is. We're talking to Michael Mooney, staff writer at D Magazine uh, down in Dallas. Also writes for GQ and is the author of The Life and Legend of Chris Kyle, American Sniper, Navy Seal. Got one more for you. Um, his work with people with post traumatic stress disorder, which. Uh, which I guess one could say it, it's that work that, that led to his death because it was one of the people he was helping that, that shot him. Um, how did he become involved with that? Well, he, he didn't want to get out of the Navy. Uh, he, you know, struggled with that a lot. It was basically to save his marriage. Um, and he really felt like he had more to give. He felt like he had uh, uh, more fight in him, and he wanted to help out any way he could. So he kind of went through a, a spiral of depression for a little while, but then uh, kind of pulled himself out, started working out more, and really it became about helping people. His life, he realized he could still help people by training, uh, by training uh, as a defense contractor, by, planning, by training police officers, and also by helping out vets, by, uh, by taking gym equipment to people's houses, by taking these vets out to the gun range, out to kind of these open, uh, open spaces, out into nature, a lot of the a lot of vets got into the military after they were already outdoorsmen. Right. A lot of these, a lot of guys really liked guns and hunting well before the military, and they had these similar problems adjusting, uh, working back into a society that really didn't seem like they were at war. Really seemed disconnected from all the things that they had seen weeks prior to being back here in pleasant suburbs of quiet streets. And so he really, he really felt uh, better. He, he really enjoyed helping people. He wanted to serve any way he could. And so if it meant taking these guys out, uh, taking them shooting, um, even if it was just taking them to dinner, just talking to them, just, you know, introducing to other military guys yeah. or to business guys who, are, who appreciated that kind of thing. It he, really made him feel better. He was an incredible man, and uh, certainly uh, in his short life, he accomplished incredible, incredible things. And uh, you were privileged to know him the way you did. Uh, Michael, thank you very much for sharing. And again, folks, the book, The Life and Legend of Chris Kyle, American Sniper, Navy SEAL. Uh, it's an e-book, so people just uh, find it online. Is that how it works with e-books? Yeah. It's on Amazon, iTunes, there's an audio version. It's on Barnes & Noble. It's all over the place. Great. Okay, good luck with it, Michael. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Michael Mooney, ladies and gentlemen.